Music history is actually fundamental to the way that music has been imagined for the last 200 years. When the great sorts of composers in the 19th century were measuring themselves against the past, they were doing so because music historians had started writing about people like Bach and people like Mozart and Haydn and Beethoven. What I do through my music history courses is that I teach students how to engage with the historical sources, how to read them, how to understand them, but most importantly how to find them themselves beyond Oberlin so that when they are coming up with their interpretation of how they want to play a piece, they'll be able to investigate everything at their disposal. And plus, music history is one of the portals at Oberlin where you learn how to communicate about music with other individuals besides musicians and besides yourself. So you learn how to write about music and you learn how to research music and so that gives you skills like say for instance writing liner notes or program notes which most students are going to have to write at some point in time. Or even grant applications. In this world it's increasingly important that anyone working in the arts has to know how to write a grant application. I look at music to see how it works in terms of its context and how it's put together to uh, help explain that to students, to help them figure out how they want to perform their music in the end. I actually have been here for a while and I've been here in two different times. I was a student here and I graduated in 1992. I was a double degree student in the conservatory and the college and I majored in trombone performance, in musicology, and in history in the college. Then I went to grad school at Harvard, and after a few years of wandering about, I came back to a job here in 2001. Was it 19th century popular? Was it 19th century artistic? What do you think and why? My specific areas of expertise are music in culture and how music is used in culture, say for instance in the 19th century and in the 20th century. And I study some dusty old composers like Edward Elgar and Ray Fon Williams. But I also work with music that was used as propaganda at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century. Music for the temperance movement, music for the women's suffrage movement, and music as well for missionaries. <laughs> I'm able to actually mix all of these things into my classes at Oberlin because of the way that Oberlin taught me that music is not just something that's in the concert hall, music is something that affects us all and reaches out its tendrils to every part of society at all points and times. I teach a number of classes here. I teach the large introductory survey course that every conservatory student is required to take. It's a one semester survey of all of Western music history from basically before the earth cooled to stuff that was written yesterday. Okay. So it's a fast-moving piano piece in its original form, virtuosic or not? Yeah, why? I teach some middle division courses, a survey of 18th century music and a survey of 19th century music, and on occasion a survey of 20th century music as well. And I teach specialized courses in Mozart and Beethoven, film music and music and narrative. There's kind of sense of a jitteriness about this because the left, right hand is following on the offbeat exactly what the left hand is doing and is doing it all in octaves. On any given evening in this institution you can hear a chamber music concert, you can hear a jazz ensemble, you can hear a orchestral or band or opera performance and then you can go to the disco or to the cat in the cream and hear folk music or alternative music or any other sort of music that you can possibly want. You could spend every day here, especially on the weekends from 1.30 until midnight, listening to as much music until you had your fill and then some. And that's one of the greatest things about being here. <laughs> 